Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the very first talk of the day, uh, where I'm going to talk about the value of social media leadership. Apologies for the headphones, um, but because I'm at home, they do help to drown out any noises like dogs barking or postmen knocking on the door and that sort of thing, or cats meowing. Um, so I'm just going to have to have to live with that, I'm afraid. Um, I'm really pleased to be here. Thanks, Luann, for inviting me uh, to talk. And um, I hope that you will find this uh, an interesting and insightful uh, conversation and um, that you will get something out of it. So a little bit about me. So my name is Damien Corbett. I'm the co-author of a book called The Social CEO, um, and I'm really chuffed that Stephen Bartlett, the great Stephen Bartlett, reviewed the book um, a while ago and gave me a very, a very favourable review. So that's really pleasing for me. Um, and I'm the head of executive social media for an organisation called STM, and um, we work with professional services organisations. Uh, and I work specifically with the leadership teams and CEOs helping with their social voice and um, uh, their sort of personal branding online. Um, and in the past, I've also dabbled in um, uh, helping leaders with social media. I ran an organization. It was more like a part-time uh, endeavor, really, uh, called the Social C-Suite, where I interviewed CEOs for my blog. I um, spoke at events, attended roundtables, that sort of thing, appeared on webinars, did a lot of the kind of thing I'm doing today as well. That was all pre-COVID. So moving on, the value of social leadership. This slide here basically sums up the question, you know, how can we convince the C-suite to take social media seriously? Yeah, how can we convince them to take it seriously? Even more so, how can we convince them to take it seriously now when this slide is from eight years ago? We were asking the same question eight years ago this is from a presentation at an event that I organized, um, looking at the same issue about leadership and social media and why leaders should be using social media. And the person who gave the presentation, this was um, his very first slide, you know, how can we convince the C-suite to take social media seriously? And eight years later, we're still asking that question. Um, why we're still asking that question, I, I don't have the answer to that. I think that maybe we were you know, I was a little bit too too early, um, you know, to get the message out. It wasn't, the, the market wasn't quite ready, perhaps, for the idea of social leadership. But what I will say is that in the last couple of years, things have started to change. And I think the one thing that made that change happen, as far as I can tell, is that little virus there. COVID, <clears throat> excuse me, COVID turned the world upside down. It certainly turned the, turned the world of work upside down with, you know, those that could working remotely, working from home and a lot of leaders, a lot of CEOs, a lot of senior leadership teams. They also had to work from home. They had to learn to lead remotely. And part of that was also them having to learn to use social media because not only were they having to lead their teams remotely, they were also often having to reassure um, their employees. Uh, their customers, um, their suppliers, and if they were running non-profits, their, their supporters, that, you know, everything was okay, that things were, things were under control. And uh, social media and LinkedIn in particular, also Twitter, was, was used by a lot of them to get those messages out. And that's when I feel that sort of social leadership really came into its own. And of course, we've, we've had, um, you know, there are other you know, we, we, we've had some other crises come and go, but I think the, the COVID crisis was, was when it really started to kind of become a thing, if that's the right word. Um, I love this quote, just uh, I'm going to throw this in early on because this is from Sarah Goodall. Um, I'm sorry if you can't see the bottom right hand corner of the screen for some reason. Um, the way I'm doing this on uh, on my laptop, it seems to be cutting out some of the um, some of the slide. But Sarah co-wrote a, a chapter for the book, uh, for the Social CEO book, and she's um, she's the founder and the CEO of an organisation called um, uh, I can't see it now. Um, anyway, she's she works in in, in um, employee advocacy, and um, she she says that social media is at the heart of the changes that are driving today's more collaborative style of leadership. Um, it allows the modern leader to be found and to engage with their community where, wherever they are. And I think that's really 
that's such a, a powerful message because I think we need to remember that, you know, um, social media is, has been around for a while and it's since COVID, it really has become um, a powerful force and leaders need to sort of start to learn to engage with it. And as I mentioned, COVID wasn't the only crisis that came along. You know, we've had in the middle of their pandemic, we had the tragic killing of George Floyd and the sort of resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement, <clears throat> the ongoing crisis about the climate and the environment and the future of our planet. And then this year, the, uh, the, the, the war in Ukraine, all of these things have caused uncertainty. And certainly uncertainty has always been there. It will always will be there. But the way that leaders deal with it and the way that leaders talk about it to their communities is changing and social media is certainly um, helping them to do that. So I just this, I think, some sort of sums up my thinking really about um, how in the post COVID sort of post truth uncertain world that we live in, um, you know, leaders are now almost expected to be present and visible online um, and to be accountable as well. And I'm going to share a few more slides about this um, in a minute, just to kind of illustrate why I think this is this is happening and why it's important. Um, so I'll start with a couple of pieces of research that I think are really, really crucial. Um, the first of, the first one is the um, Edelman Trust Barometer. Now, this is something that comes out once a year and it's organized by the Edelman PR agency. It's been going, I think, for about 20 years now and they survey about 20,000 people all over the world and they talk to them, they ask them questions about issues to do with trust and it could be trust in, uh, in, in um, governments and politicians, <clears throat> trust in the media, newspapers, trust in organisations and uh, trust in non-profit organisations and trust in the leaders, trust in the leaders of those organisations. And the other um, report that I'm going to just briefly mention is the Brunswick Connected Leadership Report, which um, surveys employees about how they would like their leaders to behave on social media. You can, if you just Google both of these, you'll find them and they're full of really useful information. Um, I'm just going to share a couple of slides. Um, I'm going to share, well, three slides actually, one from the Edelman Trust Barometer and two from the Connected Leadership Report that help to kind of um, illustrate what I'm trying to say in this talk. So this, this slide I find really powerful. So this is from the, from the Edelman um, Trust Barometer. Bear in mind that this figure of 86% here, where they've, they've surveyed people, this is employees and customers, saying that 86% uh, of them um, want their, the CEOs of the organizations that they work for or that they, they, they work with to speak up publicly about social issues. So this, this um, the, the most recent report came out during the pandemic, so obviously that was high on the list. Um, but, you know, job automation, societal issues, the climate, um, you know, uh, lots and lots of things, race, um, equality, all of these things, people want their leaders to speak out about this. And interestingly, this figure, uh, it goes up every year. If you looked at the barometer maybe um, five years ago, the figure might have been, 75 or 80 percent next year it'll probably be you know 87 88 it won't be long before it's almost nine almost 100 percent so there's definitely an expectation for ceos and leaders to speak out about issues that their their employees and their customers care about and allied to that the brunswick connected leadership report it's um, surveyed employees um, in many different countries about what they kind of expect from their leaders and this one is particularly interesting because um, this one, it, it was asking employees about um, how they want their leaders to use social media and a very high percentage of what want their leaders to, to use social media to actually communicate with the public. In India, it's, it's getting close to 100%. Um, and in Germany, it's probably about 60%. And I think globally, it's around about 75%. So these are employees actually wanting their leaders to, to engage with the, with the media on social media, uh, to engage with the public on social media, sorry. And then this other slide from the um, Connected Leadership Report is also interesting, where it's, it shows that uh, by ratio of five to one globally, employees would prefer to work for a connected leader. And again, in India, it's like getting close to 100%, um, but globally, it's um, around about uh, just above 60%. And again, as with the Edelman Trust Barometer, these, these numbers are going up every year. 
So uh, you know, it's only going in one direction. We are the leaders are being asked to to be seen, to be visible, to speak out on social media. So that's the kind of context about where we're coming from here. It's not that it's a nice to have, it's it's becoming a must have. So just before I go into the next bit, I, I know this is a rather kind of um, these these kind of quote slides. Sometimes I find them a bit corny, but I I, I, I search for something that would, would kind of sum up uh, what I'm trying to say. And I came across this one from Jack Welsh, um, and you know I, I like this. It's just it's very simple. Trust happens when leaders are transparent, and that sums up the kind of uh, the message that the Edelman Trust Barometer. The Brunswick Connected Leadership Report, they're all saying it's about being transparent, being engaging, being seen, um, and all of these things make you more trustworthy. So bearing that in mind, what are the ways that, or the reasons that leaders should be using social media? Um, I've listed 10 here. They're, they, they, there's, there's probably 100 reasons, but I've chosen 10, which I think are probably the most important at the moment, um, you know, the sort of current global situation. And of course, the top two, trust and transparency, they are absolutely, they, they go without saying, I think, bearing in mind what I've just shared with you, um, being transparent, being authentic and being trustworthy is, is so, so important. And that's absolutely top of the list. And allied to that comes things like personal branding, corporate branding, because if you get it right on social, if you can get the kind of <clears throat> get the tone of voice right, um, your own personal brand and the brand of the organization that you lead will benefit. But then there's also things like, um, you know, uh, attracting talent and engaging with employees and employee retention. Certainly, um, when I look at CEOs who are really engaged on social media, whether it's LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram, sometimes, you know, there's some of them that are just they just know what they're doing and they just they get it right. And certainly if I was looking for a job, if I was perhaps new into the workforce and I had the option, I know not everyone in the world has this has this option. But if I had the choice to choose between two organizations to work for, I would certainly look at the at what the CEOs and the leadership teams are doing online and those that are active and engaged. That would certainly <coughs> excuse me. I think I need some water, have some tea quickly. <clears throat> that would certainly make me perhaps want to work for the organization with the uh, <clears throat> with the more engaged leadership. And then, you know, things like networking, listening and learning, getting feedback. I think it's easy for us to forget that social media is actually a two way thing. It's not just about broadcasting. We can get very fixated on, you know, talking and talking and talking and sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing our thoughts and our ideas. <clears throat> but social media is, is a two way street. It's also about listening. And it's a fantastic resource. You know, I also mentioned Eureka moments. I mean, there've been many times when I've been on on, on LinkedIn or Twitter or uh, especially Twitter. Um, and I've come across things that people have shared or said or links to something that I would probably never have come across before. And it just, I thought, wow, that's amazing. You know, I never knew that. I've seen things online that have that have kind of got me to then go and buy a book or read an article or watch a film. And those eureka moments, those, those things that you get from people that you might never have met in any other way, any other capacity, that's the magic of social media as well. It's that the global brain, I like to think of it as a global brain that we can tap into. Never before has this been possible, you know, it never ever before can you just, you can sign up and you can you can basically hear what anyone is saying around the world and you can listen in and you can learn. Um, so great for getting your message out, but also great for listening and learning. So it's always worth to bear that in mind. So I know that some of you are probably very experienced on social media, but some of you might not be. So it's worth just looking at some of the, the um, the steps that you can take to get going if you're perhaps less confident and uh, less familiar with, with how it all works. So I always think it's good to kind of go back to basics <clears throat> and try and think about what do you want to do? Define your goals. What do you actually want to get out of social media? You know, is it, um, is it, it should be about demonstrating trustworthiness and being 
transparent and sharing authentic, authentic sharing authentically, um, being being um, sharing good information out there. It should be about all of those things, but it can also be about building your own personal brand. For example, if you're an ambitious leader who is working their way up the kind of um, the ladder, uh, you might want to, you know, you're thinking about your next role. And there's no harm in having a really powerful online presence because um, recruiters and, uh, and employers, they look at people's LinkedIn profiles, they look at what they're doing. And those who have got really standard profiles, they will stand out. There's no going, you know, there's, there's no denying that. Um, and in terms of branding for the organization that you work for, you know, the, the really active leaders who are using social channels well, they are amplifying the brand. They are adding value to the brand. So it's really important to think about that. So, uh, you know, think about what you want to do. Why are you doing it? You know, it might be that you uh, work in an HR front and then you want to actually attract talent or engage with your employees. So that can be the angle that you take on social. Um, so, you know, they just think about what you want to do. That's very first. And it's also, you know, once you kind of know what you want to do, you then need to understand the community that you're talking to. Um, you know, so are you are you talking to potential customers, uh, investors, perhaps employees, um, supporters? If you're a nonprofit, uh, it could be all of those. It could be other people that you, you know, but think about who you're talking to, who you want to engage with. And remember, it's not just talking to, it's engaging with. Who do you want to engage with on social? Um, who do you want to have conversations with? Who do you want to get to know you and get to know your organization? Um, follow people, find the right people to follow, engage with them, see what they're saying. And following on from that, using the word follow, <laughs> um, it's worth, you know, once you know who you want to engage with, find, find suitable people too to actually follow and connect with on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever channel you're using. It could be Instagram as well. See what they're saying. See how they use social media. You know, if you're a CEO or a senior leader um, or, a, or, or a marketing director or a marketing manager, follow other people who are in the same role. See how they do it. You can you can imitate. You can learn from the ones who are doing it well, and you can also learn from the ones who aren't doing it so well, who are doing it badly. You can say, well, okay, that's best practice. That's not best practice. There's there's no harm in doing that. So you know, learn learn from your peers, learn from your competitors, um, and you'll you'll start to get a feel for how it should work. Once you feel comfortable with um, with just understanding who you're talking to, where you're coming from, who your kind of audience is, who your community is, then you can start talking. And again, if you're not very confident on social, you can start very slowly. You can start what I call safe material. You could maybe share a press release that the company has issued, or perhaps your organization is going to be attending a, a trade show or a conference and they've, they've produced, um, you know, there's something that you can link to perhaps from the website. Um, perhaps they've, they've produced a new white paper, uh, you know, anything like that. You can, you can link to that and you can share it on your social channels. But don't just in, insert the link and click share, you know, add, add a few words of your own. Be, you know, make it sort of personalize it, uh, personalize it a bit. Make it, um, you know, your take on what you're sharing and why you think your, your audience will find it interesting. And the more you do this, you'll start to see kind of what resonates with people, what's, what gets more engagement, what doesn't. And then when you feel comfortable um, with, you know, with, with knowing what, what resonates, what people um, like and comment on, then you can start to share more of that. So you can start to get a bit more confident, perhaps. Um, and really, the, the key thing when you are sharing and engaging on social media is be interesting and authentic. No one wants to follow a robot, you know, a boring kind of corporate sounding account. You know, there's plenty of them out there. You don't want to be one of them. You want to be an individual, you know, so find your voice, speak out. Once you feel confident, if you really know your topic and know your subject, don't be afraid to be a little bit controversial or to to question perceived wisdom um, in illicit questions, elicit responses, because that's how the the algorithms, if, if you are doing that and people are engaging with you, that the more you do that, the more your content will be seen and you'll actually start to get seen by people who are not just your connections and followers, but other people. And of course, the more interesting you are, people will be sharing your content with their networks. So there's that amplification effect. So it's it's um, it's a virtuous kind of, um, it's not just a circle, it's like a virtuous concentric circles is, is how I see social media working.
This is a, a CEO, well, he's now a president, who I just think is wonderful online. Um, Brian Garish, he's the president of Mars Veterinary Health International. He was, up until recently, the CEO of Banfield Pet Hospital, and they are the, I believe they're the largest chain of veterinary um, surgeries in the, in, in the US, and they also have branches, I think, in Canada um, and Puerto Rico. And Brian has been promoted to head of um, the the company that owns Banfield, so he's not president of Mars. And Brian is so engaging on social. He uses Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram. But Brian, because particularly when he was working for Banfield and the, he was specifically kind of targeting employees with his social output. And because, as he says here, uh, you know, leaders need to go where the conversation is happening rather than expect it to come to us. And because a lot of Banfield employees were on Instagram, that's where he was. So the picture on the top, on, on, the, on the left of the screen there, that's, that's his social media profile picture with his two cats. I think the one on the left is Kenji. I can't remember the name of the other one. I do, I, I did know their names. And as you can see on his um, Instagram profile, he's not afraid to share pictures of his cats. He also shares pictures of employees with animals and doing fun things at work. When it's um, Halloween or um, other other things, you know, they'll dress up and they'll do silly photos. But there's a very serious, you know, kind of reason for doing this. It's not just frivolity. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful way to engage his workforce um, online. They all follow him and they see what he's sharing. It makes them feel part of a family, makes them feel valued. But added to that, it's fantastic branding. You know, if you think about, if you think about, if you were, you know, if you were going online and you wanted to choose, you know, what what vets to go to, and you saw that the CEO of um, of, of the chain of vets that, that you might be looking at was like this, you'd think, wow, the, the, this looks like a fantastic organisation. So fantastic branding. He, he brings out the fun of it. He, he makes it, you know, you look, it looks like a trusted organization. You think, yes, I can trust those people with my pets because they look like they really love their jobs. They love what they're doing. And, um, and I interviewed Brian um, last year, I think it was. And um, if you go to my blog, it's called the social c -suite .net. <clears throat> you, uh, I, I urge you to read the interview because he's, he's such an inspirational leader. You know, it's not just about how he uses social media. It's his whole attitude to leadership is 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 really inspiring. So, and I know that we can't all go and uh, you know have fantastic Instagram accounts like this if we are leading a bank or we you know it's it may not be appropriate. But it's just food for thought to think about to think outside the box. I don't like that expression, but I think it's important just to kind of think laterally sometimes about okay, what can I do that's a little bit different? And people like Brian maybe just give you a little bit of inspiration if nothing else. Um, okay, just getting serious for one slide for a moment. People often ask me, they say, this is great, you know, you're telling me that I need to use social media. I think it's uh, what you're saying is makes a lot of sense. I can understand why I need to do it, but I'm terrified of saying the wrong thing. I'm terrified of being called out. I'm terrified of being trolled on social, you know, so, you know, why should I do it? One of the CEOs I interviewed for my blog, she said that um, talking about being on social or not. She said, if your head isn't above the parapet, it's in the ground. So there's that. And really what she's saying, and I think what I want to say is that if you're not on social, the biggest risk is actually not being engaging on social because you miss so much. Yes, somebody might criticize you. Yes, you might say the wrong thing, but I'm hoping that most people watching this are professionals. And if they're using social media for, uh, in their professional role, they will treat it like any other any other professional tool. You know, you wouldn't go spouting off and, and saying nonsense if you're speaking at a conference or on a webinar. So why should you do, do it on social media? Um, there have been instances of CEOs I've spoken to and leaders I've spoken to who have been trolled on online. Very rare, very, very rare. It's normally extraordinary circumstances that have led to that, but they have prevailed and there are there are, you know, there's 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 um, guidance out there to, to to help you get through things like that. So I'm not going to go into that right now, but um, you know, suffice to say that it's it's a very rare occurrence, and it's much more important to be online than not to be online because these days, if you're not present, if you're a leader and you're not present on 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 social channels, people will start to ask why, 
why aren't they there? What what are they hiding? What are they afraid of? And that's not a good thing. But so yeah, be strategic in your approach. Be um, be aligned with your organization's um, strategy and goals. Obviously, uh, you know if you have a, a comms team, work closely with them. To, they can help you. They can guide you on what tone of voice that sort of thing. Um, you know, if you don't have one, seek help even externally. You know, find somebody who's a social media trainer or advisor. There's lots of people out there doing that. Um, and you know, even consider remote uh, mentoring, uh, reverse mentoring inside. You know, it's, it's you, you might find an organization in your organization that somebody who is um, they might be younger, they might not, they might be older. Somebody who is experienced at social media, and don't be afraid to. To ask them for help, I, I think you know. I, I think we shouldn't be afraid to admit that we don't know things. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, we people might come through business schools or risen up the ranks to to positions where they are, and they social media hasn't kind of been on the on the curriculum or hasn't been on the on the on, in, in the and hasn't kind of been part of the picture. So it's not surprising that many leaders aren't familiar with using social media. So don't be afraid to admit that. You know, just learn, get better, and don't, don't be afraid to ask for help. This is another quote I'd like to share. Sarah is fantastic. Sarah Walker-Smith is the CEO of um, a firm called Shakespeare Martineau. I believe she was the first non-lawyer CEO of a law firm. She's actually a trained accountant, I believe. I hope that's right, Sarah, if you're watching this. Um, and I think at one point, Sarah was the only female CEO of a senior law firm as well. Um, and uh, Sarah's attitude to life, the universe and everything is fantastic. Again, I, I interviewed her for my blog actually before the pandemic. And if you go to the social c-suite.net and look for her interview, it's, she's just such an inspiring person. You know, not only is she a great CEO of a law firm, she's, um, she's, a, she's a, a humanitarian. She's written a, a musical because she she wanted to because she thought she could because she had this urge to do it and Sarah is not somebody who comes from a really kind of privileged background you know she's she's very grounded um, and you know she says authenticity building trust and connecting with an increasingly wide range of people of differing mindsets is becoming the heart of a leader's role and that's certainly that was certainly the case before COVID it's certainly the case now you know we need to be engaging with a wide range of people um, and Sarah certainly she she embraced COVID in the sense that, well, maybe not embraced, she had no choice to adapt because Sarah was, she was in quite a high risk group. So she couldn't really, you know, she couldn't really mix. So she, as she said it, she pimped up her shed, her garden shed, and she made it into a home office. And she was, she loved that because she actually enjoyed the engaging online, being able to kind of run meetings online, not having to be traveling around the country. And she loved the use of social media. She really started using social media a lot more uh, because of COVID, and that was a case in point of, of a leader actually embracing social because they were forced to. And uh, she's, you know, she's fantastic, and she's one of these leaders as well who isn't afraid to speak out about. Um, she'll even talk about politics sometimes, not in a not in a in an argumentative way, but in a in a challenging way. If she feels that things are not being um, done fairly, you know, she she will call out people, and she'll, you know, she'll she will call out authority and question what's being done. Um, and I did ask her about that, why, if she feels that that's a, a good thing to do or not. And she, her argument was, look, if, if you're coming from the right place and you're an honest, trustworthy person and, 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 and you're coming from a good place, it's not, there's no harm in questioning perceived wisdom and questioning authority. And that's where, you know, the approach that she takes. So I really urge you to look at her social profiles. Um, she's amazing. So that is the end of my talk coming up to half an hour. So these are my socials, as they say. Um, <clears throat> so I work for STM Marketing. And as I said, we're a professional, uh, we, we work with professional services firms and help them with all aspects of marketing. And my specific role is to work with the leadership teams to on their social voice, on social story, on storytelling and that sort of thing. I also have my blog, the social c suite.net. You can find me on LinkedIn. Everything's Damien Corbett, Damien with one, Damien with an A, Corbett with one T. You can also find me on the social C-suite on Twitter and Instagram, where I have not been posting enough, I do admit. But feel free to connect with me on, you know, on any of those channels if you want to ask questions and find out a bit more about what I do, about STM and just my thoughts. If you have any, any 
fears or <laughs> apprehension about social, feel free to just get in touch and um, and contact me. So look, I hope you enjoy the rest of the of the day and that you enjoy the other speakers. We've got some fantastic speakers coming up. And um, that's it from me. Enjoy the day. Bye. Thank you.